morning, my darlings. It is a rainy Tuesday morning in the middle of summer here in the Cotswolds. It's actually exceptionally warm and muggy, but blusterous. And it's kind of giving cozy vibes. Today, I thought I would do something a tiny bit different or something that I haven't done in quite a long time, at least a year or so here on a vlog. Um, and that's a what I eat in a day video. I just thought today, you know, it's miserable outside, I wanted to do something a bit different. So if anyone is new to the channel, um, I have never ever followed any form of diet. I have not enough self-control to do that um, and I don't really believe in diets either. More on that later probably, but what I do try to do is eat whole un-ultra processed food so I try and eat a whole food diet. I'm not an especially healthy person when it comes to like loving eating vegetables so a lot of my diet is trying to make um, healthy things seem tasty. So if that sounds like you then hopefully this will be quite interesting. I am actually studying for a nutritionist qualification because I do find nutrition really fascinating and with what I do and what I share online, I think it's important that I do have um, that knowledge base, but I will say I'm not qualified yet. So this is definitely not gonna be a video where I'm telling you what to do. It's just gonna be showing you what I consume every day. And I think it's also important to mention that I live by a kind of 80-20 rule. So 80% of the time I might eat things that I know are nourishing my body and 20% of the time I just eat whatever my heart desires. Um, so let's get started. It is about half past six in the morning. I'm heading to Reforma Pilates and after I have a big glass of water, always hydrate before you caffeinate. I always like to have a big, basically soup mug of oat milk latte. This is a great example of my 80-20 because I know that oat milk is not the best thing for you, for us, for me. Um, but I just love the taste of it. Do I go to sleep excited <laughs> about my coffee the next morning? Yes, I do. So this is a real treat. Um, I use, I'll show you a little bit later, but I use the Oatly Organic Barista Milk, which I think is a really important switch if you love the barista milk like I do. I can't give it up. <laughs> I've tried other brands, um, but it's not the same. I love the creaminess of it, but the organic version is just, um, quite a bit better because oats are one of the most heavily sprayed products in terms of pesticides because they have to, they grow in quite damp <laughs> like this climates. So when they are about to be harvested, they have to be sprayed, um, which is quite a lot of chemicals, glyphosate, etc. So if you can get organic oat milk, then that is fantastic. Also, I should say I drink my coffee earlier in the morning than is probably the very, very best for my body. I wear um, an ultra human ring. This is similar to Aura, which I know lots of people have heard of, um, but it's more affordable and you don't have to have a subscription, which is fantastic. It monitors my sleep. It tells me, it sends me a notification when my caffeine window is open and when it's closed. So the ideal times for my body and my sleep cycle to have um, caffeine, but I take it all with a pinch of salt. As I said, not being able to stick to diets. I'm just not very good at <laughs> following rules, um, but I love information and I am happy to um, know things about my body and um, take it as kind of like a guideline. Anyway, I don't want to be late to Pilates, so let's get Just going. Just to quickly show you this before I go, I do put a teaspoon of the dirty chaga powder in my morning coffee. Chaga mushroom is supposed to give you lots of energy. Again, I'll talk a bit more maybe about mushrooms a bit later. And for supplements, because unfortunately, um, I would recommend the book The Dorito Effect if you find this quite interesting, but unfortunately we just simply don't get the same amount of nutrients from our food as we used to maybe 100 years ago, despite having the best intentions. So I do think supplementation is important, and the brand that I love is Wild Nutrition. Um, I do work with them quite a lot, so I do have a discount code. I've got a discount code for <laughs> my mushroom powder and even my water bottle. I'll leave those all linked down below. But Wild Nutrition is food grown supplements. So they're basically not ultra processed. And um, I've been taking Wild Nutrition for about four years, long before I started working with them. So I just absolutely adore them. And um, yes, I'm taking the daily essentials for women's fertility. Charlie and I would like to have children in the next couple of years. So I'm just kind of preparing my body in that way. So I'm taking some water, obviously, to Pilates um, and this is my ocean bottle which is 
fabulous. It's very chic in this lovely light blue colour. Good morning, my ween ween. I'm getting a serious sausage dog side eye. Um, so yeah, hydration station. And let's head out into this miserable weather. Gosh, it's like an autumn morning. And go and do some Pilates. Okay, my darlings, um, I've just finished Pilates. It was a great class and had a quick shower in the um, gym. And now I've popped on my second active wear outfit of the day because the Sweaty Betty all day collection is literally <laughs> <laughs> the most comfortable thing in the entire world. So I'm just picking up a few bits from the farm shop. I feel very, very lucky that this is literally our nearest shop. Um, and I do think it's important where possible to eat organically. So I'm picking up some organic carrots, cabbage, um, chili, and what else do I need? Um, avocado <laughs> for breakfast. I've also got a few things on the shopping list that Charlie has requested. So I'll do the shop, head home, and we'll make some brunch. Okay, back home again, and I'm about to make some breakfast. I'm just gonna leave my hair completely natural today, and it's probably gonna be a gym outfit all day kind of day, but I have elevated my activewear outfit with some of my favorite jewelry pieces. Now, these are probably actually the first really luxurious pair of earrings um, that I got. They are from Majuri, and um, I just wanted to show you them because I've had them for so long and because they are actually 14 karat gold with pave diamonds, they are something that literally lasts a lifetime. Something that I love about Majuri is that the quality of their pieces and their design is so timeless that the pieces literally are lifetime pieces. However, because I'm wearing this funky little dome kind of ring today, I'm going to switch them out to wear my Charlotte hoops. These are the Charlotte bold hoops from Majuri. They've got this really fun kind of bobbly effect on them that matches my ring. And these have got a thick 18 karat gold vermeil layer over sterling silver. So something that's really fun about Majuri is that they've got loads of different price points. I would still call them a luxury or um, what's that term? Like pr not pr um, premium, there's, there's a word <laughs> that's in between, um, but they have got really incredible breadth of price points. So these Charlotte Gold Vermeil earrings are under a hundred pounds, whereas my Parve Diamond Croissant ones, which I've had for a very long time, those are considerably more, obviously because they have got ethically sourced diamonds in them and a lot more gold. But the thing about Vermeil is that um, instead of it just being coating a sterling silver jewellery piece. It's a really, really thick layer, so it looks like solid gold. It's not going to tarnish. You can still wear pieces like this every single day, and yet you're not paying the higher price point of a solid gold piece. The Charlotte's collection from Majuri is one of my favourites. I think the styles of them is really versatile, whether you are wearing <laughs> with an active wear outfit like this, or with a pretty summer dress, or an evening outfit. The pieces are incredibly versatile. Um, I actually have another pair of earrings, which I believe are also in the Charlotte range. I'll pop a photo on the screen here. They're like two little nodules um, and a pearl hanging down, which I really want to add to my collection from Majuri. But I will leave these pieces linked down below if you are looking for something classic and timeless, beautiful quality that's not going to break the bank to add to your jewellery collection. I also think they work all throughout the year. They look really lovely with a delicate summer dress, but equally, equally with some cosy knitwear. Um, the bracelet, this little pearl bracelet that I wear every single day is also from Majuri. They do really delicate pieces and I always think that pearls are completely timeless um, and that's just a really nice addition. If you've got a nice watch that you're wearing, just to add something pretty like this on. And Majuri are also really conscious throughout their entire supply chain. So whether it is the diamonds or the gold um, or the pearls, they make sure that everything is ethically sourced from conflict-free um, sources. So it's kind of, you can relax and know that you're wearing something beautiful that also doesn't have any negative <laughs> backstory to it, if you know what I mean. So that is my fabulous timeless jewelry for today. I am now going to make my, oh, and I will of course leave all of these pieces linked 
down below and there will be a QR code on the screen here and you can actually shop my Majuri favourites by scanning the barcode just to make it super easy in case you're watching this up on your TV screen you can get your phone out and scan it. So um, that is how I'm accessorising my very very cosy outfit for this rainy July day. Now I'm going to make a yummy avocado toast which I know is not groundbreaking, I do this most mornings but I don't think I've ever showed you if you're a regular vlog watcher, my full process for the what I call the mega avocado toast. So that's what I'm gonna do this morning. Okay, I've come down to the kitchen garden and I like to try and eat as much as possible from the garden every day. I have been foraging quite a lot lately, so I don't think there'll be a huge amount. My beans are not quite ready yet. As soon as the beans are ready, we'll have so much to eat, but they are still in their flower stage at the moment. I also harvested loads of courgettes yesterday for a nice pasta dish. I don't think they're ready either. This is typical. Is anything ready for me to eat? So obviously lots of herbs. Um, I also harvested <laughs> lots of broad beans yesterday and already took them in the house. So I know I've got some of those coming to the end of broad bean season. Not a very successful mission down here so far, but I will take some kale. Nice. I might actually whack this in my morning smoothie. Okay, so first up, my nice freshly baked seven seed sourdough, um, which I got from Delsford this morning. Looks like this. It is not an ultra processed bread. It's literally just the traditional bread ingredients. Sourdough, even better, full of seeds. Top marks. So I've got some broad beans and mange too from the garden and then I've got some organic garden peas from M&S, frozen peas, and I'm going to cook these just for a few moments just to blanch them in some salted water on the agar. They're going to be a really lovely topping for my aloe toast. I love to top my avo toast with some toasted seeds, so I'm going to add some of our seed mix. Now we put this together just to make it easier, not having to open loads of jars every time. Got sunflower, flaxseed, linseed, chia seed, pumpkin seed, all together in one jar. Um, something that Charlie and I both love to do is try and get as many different plants and seeds and spices and herbs into our diet as possible. Any other Tim Spector followers? <laughs> <laughs> will know that ideally you want to get at least 30 different varieties into your diet and each seed is a different variety. So I'm going to toast these and they will be a perfect garnish for my avo toast. Um, even sometimes, well I haven't done this in the past but I'm thinking I might do this moving forward going on holiday. I might even just take some of these in a little Tupperware because it's just so good for you in the morning to have that seed mix either on yogurt or on an omelette. You can put it on a soup at lunchtime. Not very expensive, but really adds a lot of diversity into your diet. Now I'm going to add one of these, the bigger leaf, into... Actually no, I'm going to add them both into my smoothie. I was going to air fry one of them, but I can't be bothered to do that this morning. So they're going to go in my smoothie, which I'll have after my avo toast. Um, and I put together these smoothie jars, uh, which just saves me so much time. So I've got the frozen organic berries, raspberry, strawberry, blueberry, blackberry. You can see I've got some seed mix in here as well. Um, my protein powder, chia seeds. I've got some tremella and lion's mane mushroom powders, electrolytes, collagen powder, basically all of the good stuff and the fact that they're frozen I batch prepare about eight glasses at a time, jars at a time, it saves me a lot of time in the morning and then I'll blend that in my Thermomix with this bottle of kefir, it'll be two days worth so I add day two back into the empty bottle um, and a pouch of this organic acai acai, <laughs> frozen acai, which I get from Ocado. So I'm just going to leave that to defrost slightly while I finish making my avo toast. A 
Okay, I have podded my broad beans after waiting for them to cool down. They were only cooking for a couple of minutes. <laughs> Sorry, the dogs are on a mad one this morning. So now it's time to toast my bread. This is the Dalesford Organic Butter. So delicious. And while I wait for that to soften, I'm just gonna get my seeds out of the agar. It's very quick before they get burnt, so you've gotta be quite on it with the seeds. Okay, to my sliced avo, I'm adding a sprinkle of sea salt. Yum, yum, yum. A little pinch of chili flakes. A little dusting of sumac, which is just adding another wonderful spice in there. And then we're gonna do the greens. Now I'm obsessed with dukkha. It is so tasty. Um, and again, just full of, full of different spices, which is so good for you. So I'm gonna sprinkle this quite generously on top. Yum! A substantial drizzle of olive oil. And not forgetting my seed mix. Now I would finish this usually with some microgreens, um, but my pea shoots just went over and my second batch are not quite ready yet, so I haven't timed it to perfection. Another sprinkle of salt, just for good measure. Ooh, I should have grabbed some radishes from the garden because I've been using the mand um, yeah, mandolin to slice some radish on it lately as well. So add radish and add pea shoots or broccoli microgreens and that would normally be my fully, fully loaded avo toast. It's quite a feast, but it is quarter to 11. So this is very much my brunch for the day. What do you think, bunny? <laughs> not impressed, mummy, because puppies do not like avocado. Now it's time for my breakfast dessert. That was delicious, by the way, so filling. So for my dessert, <laughs> I'm gonna have my lovely smoothie. So this, the kefir and the acai are all going in the blender. I fill this up with water and shake it about to get those last little bits. So there's tomorrow's smoothie, ready to go. And I will top today's with some bee pollen. Yummy, oh my gosh, that is seriously delicious. Okay, we've been on a work call for the last hour and a half. Um, I haven't finished my smoothie yet. Still really full from that mega avo toast. I've got another call now starting in five minutes. I've made myself my second oat milk latte of the day. Since we replaced our microwave with the Our Place Wonder Oven, we no longer have a microwave. So um, I don't mind. The only thing is that I used to stick my coffee in there if I let it get cold. So now I have my coffee in the um, Ocean Bottle thermal mug, which obviously keeps it hot for like eight hours. <laughs> so I will basically slowly slurp this all afternoon now. And then I've got my water in my same ocean bottle that I had this morning for my gym session. Topped it up a few times. Just by having it in a bottle, I really note how much I drink. So this is only the second time I've filled it today. So I've not really drunk enough water, but um, there we go. That's my beverages <laughs> that I'm gonna take up to the office for this afternoon's calls. Okay, we have finished our work calls for the day. I would actually normally have lunch about now, um, but I'm still not hungry. <laughs> not really surprising because that avo toast at 11 was huge. So I'm gonna go straight through probably to have an early dinner. We are now gonna head over to Adderbury, which is where our holiday rental cottage Store Top 1 and Store Top 2, that's where they are. Um, Store Top 2 has been under renovation, soon to launch, and I've not seen it in a very, very long time. So we now have carpets, we now have joinery, we now have paint on the walls, radiator covers. So I thought I would share with you a massive Store Top 2 
update within the vlog. Well, isn't this a beautiful sight? Oh my goodness, I've not been here since the hydrangeas have been flowering and they just look so magical. Definitely, okay, obviously I'm biased, but <laughs> definitely the prettiest and cutest cottages in the village. So store top one and the new store top two. Oops, we're about to get interrupted by an Ocado van. Um, but don't they look amazing? So many hydrangeas are obviously quite floppy at the moment because of the amount of rain. Some beautiful pink, are they hollyhocks? I think so. This village is very, very good for them to grow. Anyway, let's go and take a look inside. Right, here we are in Straw Top 2. Obviously still very much a building site, um, but you can see the beautiful green on the walls. And this is my first time seeing the new carpet on the stairs. So this is an artificial sisal. So we went for real sisal next door and it's not the most hard wearing. It's still looking good next door, but we went for something a bit more durable this time with this lovely green banded ribbon edge, which I think is such a beautiful detail. Charlie used a local company for this. Um, and then you guys have probably seen all of this before, but the lovely green around the stone fireplace, which is one of my favorite features of cottage number two, charnwood stoves just tucked away in there and the lovely lighting now the best bit of this cottage is oh new radiator covers as well with this kind of linen effect on the inside it's really hard to cover radiators <laughs> because they're not the most attractive of things but i really like how this looks it's a very kind of cozy finish i love the floors in here we have them all sunblasted back the kitchen is just gorgeous. We've got a pink arga, pink cabinets, really beautiful joinery here. Lovely. Um, we now have some shelves up in here and this one has got a selection of different hooks that will put pans and um, colanders and things like that. I'm really excited for lots of you to be able to try an arga. If you've not tried one before, this is obviously much newer and cleaner than our one at home, um, but it looks great another radiator cover and then in here we have got dun 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 oh my goodness new doors on the garden room we call this the garden room i'll pop in a before photo of how this used to look and this is probably i think probably been the most expensive thing that we've done renovation wise replacing the old they were kind of plasticky metally doors and windows with this beautiful i think it's an oak and then we've got really beautiful charlie's chosen all of these finishes um as you can see we've got lots of bricks outside it's going to be beautiful little terraced garden out there by the time we're done um yeah i mean the quality of this is just gorgeous it looks really really nice we've got a few a few little finishing touches just to make it all perfect um but yeah it looks really great this is the boot room where you can come and hang up your muddy muddy coats muddy boots in a lovely green we use the same joinery company um, to do this and then we added in this floor it looks like it's been here for centuries but actually we've <laughs> just added it in and then this really beautiful i think it's called yellow pink edward bulmer on the walls it's a really nice fresh color this cottage both cottages are dark and cozy perfect for autumn but then i think with the yellow it also lends itself to spring and summer as well we definitely considered all seasons in the decoration here um but let me take you upstairs i'll show you the bedrooms and the bathroom always tricky talking to camera as much when we're here because um there's tradesmen here which charlie has to who charlie has to catch up with um and check on all the details but we're up in the first floor bedroom and we now have painted walls radiator covers where is it just below me um and carpets which is very exciting it's this stage where everything really starts to come together and we can picture how it's going to look when we launch this room feels super cozy it's obviously a very dark rainy day um but i think the green walls just make it feel very welcoming the light fittings are nice are they soho lighting no they're boogie i oh, think boogie. i remember when we had these put in the challenge was not with them. I think we're going to have lampshades like down. Okay. Down lampshades. Mm -hmm. right. Carpet looks good. Got the artwork already. <laughs> this is your new obsession buying artwork, isn't well, it? Well, we've had this for a while. Some this of this is, is nice. Yeah, do you know what? I'm not sure this is going to work here, actually. I was really? thinking, thinking it might be perfect for our, um, our green bathroom. Oh, um, yes. I not take that now, <laughs> um, we do a lot of swapping nice and sharing. There. Yeah, because the mirror that we decided on for the bathroom is this one, which I think is better. Ooh. 
Yay, shower looks good. Oh yeah, that's really nice. It will be really nice. So the sink, so in here we've got the sink and the taps to be fitted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shower was a real challenge. This is yeah. going. So basically we're having a cut out and something recessed put in from the same brand. Okay. So it'll be the same color, but it will give us that much more. Now it's never going to be a shower for someone over about six foot three <laughs> because it's a cottage and that's just the nature the of the ceiling is just not there. Sorry? The ceiling doesn't give enough no. height, does it? But um but the good thing is the, the 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 you know the solution here is that we'll use this at home. So we'll be able to reuse that. I'm thinking that could work in the pink bathroom because we're reading three bathrooms at home, aren't we soon? Mm. So yeah, so that's going to be cut out and that will be done. So then that will look quite nice. I really like the shower closure. The door is really nice. I mean, look, obviously in an absolute ideal world, I wanted it all to match, but the dimensions of this room are very tricky. Yeah. So hopefully we've managed to get a good radiator because there's no heating here. So this will make it nice and warm because we mm -hmm. need a big radiator in here, towel rail. We've got a really nice toilet. Oh, I love the toilet seat. Sounds really good. It's a very rigid. nice toilet seat. Um, and even, even that, even this, this like yeah. the antique brass, well, exactly, very posh. So then we've got that. Then we've still got the sink and a, a mirror, and then maybe we're going to put a shelf. We haven't worked that. We're going to yeah. get all that fitted and see, or mm -hmm. potentially a cab, a bathroom cabinet here that people can put things in. Yeah. And then I think we need to probably put a piece of artwork there, or a bathroom cabinet there, and artwork there. We need to just get everything fitted. Yeah. Um, but it's trying to get the most out of what is a small room. They are small bathrooms, but yeah. you know, you don't go to a cottage expecting no. ginormous bathrooms. Anything new upstairs? So, I mean, upstairs has all been carpeted, so it looks good. Oh yeah, these are the taps, look. That's really nice. Blimey, it's so dark in here. Yeah, well, you can turn the light on. <laughs> that does occasionally help. Ooh, very nice. So that'll be nice. So that's obviously for the sink. Yeah, show me close up. Yeah, that is lovely. Wow, it's weighty. We are going for very nice quality fixtures and fittings in here, same as store yeah. top one. Okay, let's have a quick look upstairs, yeah. shall we? Yeah. So funny because you get deja vu, you could almost be in store top one here. Well, I think that's the thing. I think down, obviously, decor wise, it's quite different, mm. but downstairs, the layout's totally different. Yeah. Whereas up, as soon as you come up the stairs, it's identical. Quite Absolutely. What, what identical. is interesting though, you wouldn't necessarily notice, but for example, next door, this is like hip. Yes, it's narrower. And the same here, so there's actually slightly less room in the room. But then you've got more room here, mm. so I've got a nice dressing table to go here. Where's um, that massive chest of drawers that's in our uh, in our entrance hall going? I'll show you in a second. Okay, um, let's right. head on up. Here we go, top floor bedroom. What <clears> colour are the walls? I can't even really tell. This is drab green. Drab I mean, it's green. a very dark day today. Very. And the light, this is always going to be a much darker room. I mean, obviously we're going to have a floor lamp, table lamps, etc. Um, but yeah, it's drab green, so it's the same as our boot room at home. So the idea here is also this chimney breast is a lot more pronounced pronounced the next door so i think what we're going to look at trying to do is put some shelving in here yeah so that then the armchair will go in here and it's almost like a side table what light is in there I've got oh, a light, a light. A light put in there. yeah um <clears throat> as an option um and then obviously the bed yeah um so yeah but it looks, looks great. good Carpets. And i do think they've done a good job with these i mean look there's a fair bit of touching up to be done yeah but yeah they're nice as a radiator cover goes it's good yeah, and it means we've got a little bit of extra space for people to put their bits on. Yeah. Um, so the chest of drawers is going... The one thing I have, I am debating, is these wall lights. Oh no, I like them, they're retro. Them, yeah. yeah. Where's the chest of drawers going? Isn't it a bit big? No, it's not in here, it's downstairs. It's going to be downstairs. So we've already got the chest of drawers for here, which is the same one as next door, because I bought them as a pair. Like, they were bedside tables. Once yeah. again, it's quite tricky getting furniture for these rooms because of the, of the <clears> dimensions. <throat> mm. So, um... We've got another bedside table option instead of those, but I think those will work quite well with the king size in here. Yeah. And then the king size in here, the idea is quite a subtle headboard, mm -hmm. um, which we need to measure up in a minute. Whereas okay. the one on the first floor bedroom can be a lot more print, statement, etc. Cool. Yeah. Looking good. Home again from Store Top Cottage. I've got somebody looking at me wanting cuddles. Right, serious question now. Does anyone else insert their dog's name into pop songs? Because I do. For every song that I sing, and Charlie the same, we will remix the song to include the dog's names. So for example, I just found myself singing, how's it even go, the James Blunt song? 
Knock on Dexie's window, knock on Dexie's door. Dickie makes me feel beautiful. You're lovely. Christmas songs, it's great fun, especially all I want for Christmas, obviously, is Dickie. Mm. Away in Dickie's manger, no crib for Dexie's head. If anyone else, is this mad? Let me know down below. Just let me know that I'm not alone. Oh, I just adore you so much. <laughs> right, anyway, the reason why I turned on the camera was not to tell you how mad I am <laughs> about doggies. Um, it was to tell you that I'm hungry. It's half past four. Ordinarily, if I was this hungry at half past four, I would just start making dinner. I don't like to eat my dinner too close to bedtime um, because I like to move after eating. I did read The Glucose Goddess and I did listen to all the podcasts that she did, for example, with Stephen Bartlett. And having worn a CGM in the past, I recognize that a lot of her tips really work. So for example, eating something green before a meal, eating like your veggies first, that really, really helps with energy levels and blood sugar levels, but also moving after eating is something that I find impacts me hugely. I remember when I was wearing the CGM, one day I had a massive macaroni and cheese. And when I say a big mac and cheese, my mac and cheese portions just for me are normally like this big. I don't go light <laughs> when it comes to mac and cheese. Um, and my CGM, I used one from a company called Lingo. It sends you push notifications. Actually, these guys do one as well. They do a CGM, which would be quite cool. I'd probably do theirs next um, to like link it up with everything else. I, I just love getting stats and data, but it's if you're the kind of person that gets a bit obsessed with data, like Charlie said, he wouldn't want one of these because um, he would probably get a little bit too obsessed with it. I can take it with a pinch of salt. Anyway, I've digressed about three times within my story, haven't I? Um, <laughs> let's try and backtrack. Okay, mac and cheese. The CGM that I wore when I had that huge mac and cheese recognized my blood sugar was spiking when I had it, so it recommended that I got some movement and went out for a walk, which I did. Normally after mac and cheese, I would fall asleep straight away. I would go into a deep slumber, my blood sugar would crash, and I would be wiped out. Like in the last but one vlog where I said I made that massive, amazing pasta at like 3 p.m. I was obliterated that afternoon. Um, but having gone for the walk after that huge mac and cheese that time, I felt amazing. And I, I actually didn't feel hungry for 24 hours after eating that mac and cheese because my body absorbed the goodness from it so gradually over time. Why was I talking about mac and cheese? Ah, blood sugar levels. <laughs> um, being more manageable if I can eat earlier and not too close to bedtime. I don't properly intermittent fast, but I do have it in my head that ideally you do want to give your body, and especially your gut, uh, an as long as possible period between your eating windows. So give it as long a window as possible because when we give our gut chance to rest, that's when it goes into repair mode um, and it's, it is really good for you within reason. I don't do it to any extremes, but I do like to eat as early as possible and finish eating as early as possible in the evenings. Having this in mind also stops me from being really tempted to have like a brownie at 8 p.m. Um, and then like today, the first solid thing, solid thing that I ate was my avocado toast at 11. However, I had had my oat milk latte at like 6.30 a.m., which does break the fast. So I'm very flexible with these things, but I'm aware of them, which I think is probably the healthiest way to be. Just be aware, but don't like live your life bound by these rules. That's vibe that I go with. So <laughs> it's taken me four minutes to go around and around explaining um, my current train of thought, but the reason I can't start cooking my dinner right now to have an early dinner is because Charlie has got sports massage from 5 till 6.30, a physio treatment, um, so he's not going to be ready to have dinner until like 6.45. So I need a snack. And what I like to have are energy balls. I normally make them when I'm feeling organized. I make them out of dates, seeds, nuts, goji berries, cacao powder, and they're amazing. But alas, I do not have any <laughs> in the house at the moment. I can't be bothered to make my kale crisps in the air fryer because that takes like 15 minutes. So I'm gonna do a cupboard rummage. <laughs> normally, the best thing to start on is some nuts, and I quite enjoy snacking on almonds. 
These are just plain old almonds, the same as what I would put on my yogurt in the evening or in my smoothie. Great snack if you're not ravenous. I do in the back of my head also know that I've got some cookies upstairs, um, like iced biscuits. So I know I'll be having those in a moment, but also let me show you our treat straw. So this straw here is our treat straw. And I always come here when I'm peckish. This is the jackpot. This is exactly what I could do with right now. This is giant puffed corn, which may not sound that exciting, but oh my goodness, it is so tasty. This is left over from when we were hosting at the weekend. So that's a strong option. We've also got some crisps in here. Um, and I know for sure that they are, this brand here is the best brand of crisps of all time. Their truffle and their olive oil flavors are my favorite, but I'm also partial to the ham on. These are the truffle flavor, so I'll be smashing through those as well. Um, and then if I happen to crave something a bit more sweet, I just love a date. I prefer dates blended up in an energy ball or with like chocolate melted over or something like that, but I haven't prepped anything. But dates are amazing for snacking. If it was a sunny day as well, I'd probably head into the garden and like pick some edamame or um, when it's pea time of year, which I feel like none of my peas have done anything this year. How are everyone else's peas? I would go and snack on them because little green snacks, little veggie snacks are obviously the best for you. Um, and also none of these snacks, I guess the crisps and these technically are slightly more ultra processed, but as I said, 80-20 rule, you gotta have a life, you gotta enjoy things. And my life doesn't revolve around being healthy. <laughs> it's just something that I like to keep in mind. So there we go. I'm gonna take these upstairs, finish my almonds. I have got to start packing now um, for our trip that we're going on on Friday. So will I be there when you're watching us? Yes? Yes, I will be in Provence when you're watching this. It's part holiday, part work trip. I'm not gonna show you me packing because I think that's really boring and I need to just get my head down. But these are the snacks that I will be enjoying. Oh, I just missed my mouth. That is so embarrassing. These are the snacks that I'll be enjoying while I pack. Oh, sorry, that clip was probably really loud because you're right above the dishwasher. That was silly. Whoa, awful lighting. Um, but for my <laughs> post popcorn, no, not popcorn, corn, puffed corn snack, these are the sweeties I was telling you about. So these are Look Good Feel Better cookies created by Koi Biscuit that Revlon sent to celebrate their new matte lips. Color Stay Limitless Matte. That actually sounds really good. Ooh, that is a nice color. This lighting is awful. Worst lighting in the world, actually. Ooh, I like that. Maybe a little bit dark on me. I'll try the pinkier one next time, but cookies. Mm, <laughs> it kind of tastes nice as well. So I'm just going to snuffle these while I do my packing. Mm, that's good. Yummy. Okay, my darlings, it's now 25 past six. I had hoped to have gotten started on dinner a bit earlier, but here we are. So tonight, Charlie said he fancied like a chicken noodle kind of dish, so, I have been wanting to do air fried crispy chicken in a while, so I'm gonna do my um, like corn flake, so crispy air fried chicken breast. I'm gonna make some veggie spring rolls, my first time making those, um, and then we're gonna do some really yummy veggie noodles as well. So first thing to do is marinate the chicken breast. Again, ideally I would have done this a little while ago, but it's okay. We have got an incredible local butchers. It is a regenerative farm, um, which is kind of the best of the best. It means that they're caring for not only the animal welfare, but also caring for the land and caring for it in a way that adds longevity to the, um, literally to the soil so that we can get more produce out of it and not strip the nutrients from the soil. So regenerative, I think they call it a regenerative biodynamic farm. This butcher's is so good in fact that rest, like top restaurants in London will get these guys to deliver their meat to them. So we're so lucky to have this paddock farm. 
Um, and also price-wise, compared to supermarket chicken breasts, obviously the quality is much, much better if you can get them from a local butcher. You're also supporting local, um, but you, I do think that you get better value for your money, definitely in terms of nutrient value and taste, but also in the size and the weight. Like, these are chunky chicken breasts. They are quite hefty. So, we're gonna do, in a bowl, a couple of egg whites. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of this organic toasted sesame oil and a pinch of pepper. And I'm going to chop up my chicken breasts into fairly small little chunks. See, for one person, this is so huge that I actually only need one chicken breast. Charlie will probably have two or two and a half. I'm actually going to add a teaspoon of smoked paprika into this mix. And I'm just going to leave that sitting in that mixture. Not that there's that much flavour in it, but just for five minutes while I prepare the veggie spring rolls. So while that's marinating, I'm going to do the spring rolls. I'm going to start by cutting up some veg. You can obviously choose what you want in your spring rolls. I'm obviously going to do courgette because I've got it from the garden. Um, I might just stick a few bits of mange too in there, just for a little bit of crunch in the middle because why not? Um, I've got the carrots that I picked up from Dalesford this morning. Cabbage is a really good one, a good filler. Pepper is a good one. And again, I might just stick in some kale from the garden. So I'm gonna slice that all up. You know how veg looks in a spring roll. I think bean sprouts, um, other little microgreens would be fun as well, but let's start chopping. lovely tray of veg that's going to go in the spring rolls. Now we're going to mix up a little bit of a concoction. So I'm doing a tablespoon of corn flour, a tablespoon of dark soy sauce, mixing this together. Now a tablespoon of sesame oil, and a good dollop of honey. This is a local honey, someone in our village um, creates their own honey. If you suffer from seasonal allergies, seasonal honey is meant to be the best because these bees are literally enjoying the pollen that is causing your allergies. So it's meant to be the most soothing if you can get local honey. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that aside and I'm gonna fry these just on their own for a few seconds and then I will add this mixture and then season. going back and forth a little bit here and this amount of back and forth is about as much as I can handle I don't know how professional chefs do it but I'm leaving my stir-fried veg just to cool down for about 10 minutes I would say it will be enough just so that it's you know cool enough to handle but the veg is wilted um, but it's not lost any of its crunch so we'll let that cool down for a few moments meanwhile we'll prepare the crunchy bits for the chicken Yum. So, of course I'm not using <laughs> regular cornflakes because they're ultra processed. Um, so I'm gonna use the organic Dalesford toasted cornflakes, which is very, very bougie. A little um, easy way to tell if something is ultra processed is just flip it around, have a look at the ingredients on something that you're considering purchasing. And if there's anything in the ingredients list that you don't know what it is, or you don't have in your kitchen, chances are probably it's ultra processed or um, not that good for you. So I'm gonna take a few handfuls of cornflakes. To be honest, I'm probably only gonna use these cornflakes for this kind of recipe, so I can pretty much just crunch up this entire bag. Now, <laughs> all over the kitchen. <laughs> I'll be 
obviously that one's gonna happen. Right, I have to clear this up before Charlie comes in because he will have a moment. That's what happens when you get carried away and take your stress out on the cornflakes. Dexy, feel free to eat them. I'm gonna have to go and get a dustpan and brush. Cornflake devastation, Dexy. Oh dear. Disaster averted, well, tidied. I had to put these in the Thermomix because they're quite sturdy little, little um, flakes. So I'm gonna add in some garlic granules, organic ones from Ocado, and some of my smoked paprika. And then it's a case of dunk, dunk, mist, air fry. chicken is just finishing in the air fryer. Here are the homemade crispy veggie spring rolls and they did turn out nice and crispy. This is a homemade sweet chili jam. Not homemade by us, it was bought over as a lovely gift from a friend. So I'm looking forward to tucking into these, they smell delicious. And the chicken is almost ready. So here we go, we have got my crispy chicken on the noodles that Charlie has done with some, um, I don't know what you would call it, but like pickled carrot with apple cider vinegar. Pickled carrot with apple cider vinegar. It looks deliciously crunchy with the veggie spring rolls and homemade sweet chili sauce. This looks absolutely scrumptious. The is finally clearing at half past eight in the evening. Gosh, I feel so full. <laughs> so very full from that dinner but it was delicious but I very much need a mint tea so I like to come down the garden and pick some fresh mint leaves if I was doing it for more than just me then I would pick it like low down on the stem take the whole thing in but that'll probably be enough this is a peppermint and then this one is more of a traditional Moroccan mint nice to have a mixture this is our herb bed it's quite overgrown at the moment but different herbs have got lots of different benefits. Rosemary, meant to be really good for the brain. Oregano, sage dill, um, and also for digestion, as well as mint. And also really good before bed, because it's so calming, is lemon balm. This got huge, so I had to really cut it back. Um, so it's looking a little bit mini at the moment, but they're not quite as strong as mint leaves, so you do need a few more. But mint and lemon balm grow very, very vigorously. So don't ever worry about taking too much. If you want to grow it at home, I would not recommend doing it in a bed. Lemon balm is not as bad as mint, but mint will take over. This entire bed would be a mint bed within one summer. So I would recommend getting some pots. They don't need to be as big as these ones. We used to have little plant pots, about half the size of this when we lived in London. I need to do some rose dead heading. I might actually do that with my mint tea, even though it's quite late because I need to get some fresh air and digest my dinner. <laughs> mint tea will be the last thing that I consume today so even though this is probably a lot a lot a lot shorter than my regular vlogs I'm gonna end it here that was the aim of a what I eat in a day um, but I really hope you enjoyed the vlog let me know if you like the shorter ones I think I prefer the longer ones and I think most of you prefer the longer ones as well but something a bit shorter for a change um, as you can hear we've got the football on in the background I'm gonna deadhead a few roses while I enjoyed this and then we'll be heading up to bed in probably under an hour um, so that's all from me darlings I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one